Welcome back to the workshop. This is part two of the portable art desk tray building process. If you remember from the last time, we had gotten our pieces for the first tray, and uh, we made marks for our tails. The tails will be on this side, because we're going to do this dovetail style. Tails, and then we'll be doing the pins once the tails are made. Okay, so the way that I do tails and pins and dovetails, I do it the Paul Sellers way. And it may not be specific. It's probably not specific to Paul Sellers. That's just who I learned that from. His, his style uh, resonates with me the most. So that is what I sort of tend to go with. Oh, and I'm going to need this one too. A lot of things he does is he will make a knife wall. It'll make it easier to remove things eventually. So following that mark that I used for my... Because this is plywood, I really don't need to do a lot of chisel work with this. It's going to be a lot of sawing, really. I'm making a knife wall so it's more easier for me to to feel and for the saw to feel where to cut. This sort of where, oh, there we go. Now, for this next part, I'm going to start cutting my dovetails. I've got my spacer. Let's see here. My dovetail saw, although I could also use my gentleman's saw. That This is my dovetail saw. It might be a little big for this. I also have... A smaller gentleman saw can be used for the same purpose. Okay, got that part done. These. Now there's different ways of taking the waste off, getting the waste off of this. Um, you can saw it off or you can chisel it off. For our purposes, for what I'm doing, I would just assume saw it off. It's gonna be faster. Let's get a cross cut. First dovetail, first tail. Now, in order to transfer the location of the tails onto the piece that would get the pins, I use a dovetail alignment board. 
is a dovetail alignment board. This was a creation of David Barron. He had a video online showing how to make one of these, and so I made one with some oak. So this is a completely David Barron idea, not mine. I did mention it in one of my jigs and helps videos. Basically, the way this works is I'm going to take my pin piece and then on one end of the board, and then the tail is going to match up to that. That's the idea. And then you mark it either with a pencil or with a knife. Something you really want to do before you start this thing is arrange your pieces and number them or put letters on them or something like that so you know what end is going to match with what end. So I'm just going to go ahead and that makes more sense when you're dealing with, um, let's say, a long piece of wood that you cut into four pieces and then align together. You're going to want the bottom to remain the same throughout. Uh, Puzzle Box 4 is an, is an example of that. If you've seen Puzzle Box 4, that's made out of one piece of mahogany that was then cut up to make the box. And so that is where keeping your bottom the same makes more sense and is important with this, where we're getting scrap pieces from different pieces of wood, it's, it doesn't really, it's not as important, but we're still going to go ahead and number our pieces to make it uh, useful for what we're doing. So, one, two, two, three, three, four, and the last one is four and one sure that these were all pretty much done about the same so that's how we're going to do it and that is how you're going to know how to align them on the dovetail alignment board and what to align to what so here's our two three this is your bottom and want to make sure it is, there we go, aligned on both ends. Usually I have a spacer in here. Doing this, put this in here, and use a pencil. Okay. My hand may have been in the way for that, but basically you've got your marks. Match up with this part. Some people use tape. I've seen that. In fact, I had never seen the tape method until I started doing Instagram and I saw people doing it on Instagram. So obviously it's not the only way out there. There are other ways of doing it. Two and four. So three and one are going to be the other side. It works as uh, corners. So if two, two and four were on this side, you'll know that one and three will be on this side. And then And of course, of course, the reason for doing this with the dovetail alignment board, it keeps your bottoms at the same place and keeps your piece square. And so that's the important part of doing that. So the next thing to do is to get our depth on the pieces that will have the pins. Let's get this. And we're going to mark on these how far these are going to go, which again is not very far. So if 
The next thing to do is to mark where those will be. Now we don't need the dovetail alignment for this one. All we need is our square. Because these are going to be straight down. Now, the thing that we need to keep in mind here is that we are going to keep the end pieces, but we're going to get rid of the middle. So let's go ahead and sort of mark them. So we know that the middle is three, two. Many are those who have knocked out the wrong things. They got on, they didn't mark it out. So, had to do it over with another piece of wood. We don't have enough wood here to play games like that. So, we have to do it the right way the first time for this project. Rather than saw to get this out. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut where our pins are going to be. Now you might remember this. This is the sticking board I showed in one of my Jigs and Helps videos. I'm going to use it as a solid surface for getting the waste out. Now normally, of course, I'd have a piece over this to protect the wood uh, from this, but who cares? This is a tray and a portable desk for painting, so it's going to get messy anyway. You'll never see that because it will get other stuff on it. So, first thing I'm going to do is get a chisel and lightly tap out the line. I'm going to choose a slightly smaller chisel working out the waste. Since I'm working with uh, plywood, I'm just working out the layers of the plywood rather than actual wood fibers that you get in a real piece of wood. Okay. Just work my way down. Now I'm going to flip it over so I can start on the other side. Light tap. Well, 
light tap. Most of it is now about ready to come out. This one did bad. This one did kind of really. Okay, so we have one complete. Uh, this is number one. It's number one. Done. Gonna do the rest of them. Okay, so take that off. Remember that this is the bottom of the piece. It had the holes from a previous project. Who cares? That doesn't doesn't have any effect here. So some of these go together pretty easily, some do not. Okay, hit that one in. There's two. Four. Four was one. Well, three, they all went in very well except for four. Four is a little loosey goosey. And when I was cutting for four, I noticed that I cut the pin a little more than I should have. I know that's part of the problem, but for this case, the glue will take care of that. So let's look at it with our, our tray. Glue will amend all sins that were done in putting this together. I will say, uh, you know, I mean, this is plywood, so not a big deal. Uh, not everyone's dovetails are as perfect, perfect and exact as you see in magazines, Instagram, wherever. Um, I can tell you mine are not perfect all the time. In fact, most of the time they are not. But, you know, I'm a hobbyist woodworker and I don't do this every day. People who do it all the, do it a lot or are just exceptionally talented have perfect dovetails. It takes a lot of practice. So if your dovetails are not exactly perfect as you see online, don't worry, you're not alone. Well, it looks like this will work, so the next step will be glue up, and uh, that'll be it for this tray. And the second tray, I'll do the same way. For this glue up, I'm going to use this tight bond. You might remember from a short that I had left a bunch of stuff in the garage in a chainsaw box over the winter, and uh, it was below zero a few times. So... Whether the things in the box got frozen or not, I don't know, but I did try this and it seemed to work, so I'm going to use it for this glue up. Uh, this scrap piece of wood, sometimes I use toothpicks and I always have a glue block that I use for taking the extra. Sometimes I'll put some wax paper down uh, to protect surfaces. So I don't want, I don't mind getting glue on my workbench. I don't want the piece to glue to the workbench. That's the important thing to note there. 
And as Paul Seller says, when you're doing the glue up, you don't look at your phone, don't answer your phone. You, you got to really make this your priority because this is a timed setup. And once it is done, there's no going back. And whenever I do a glue up, I let it sit overnight. Whether I give it the full 12 hours, it, it may get a lot more than 12 hours. I just I let it sit overnight and I deal with it the next day or the day after that or whenever there is no rush. Okay, so we've taken the clamps off, done. This is plywood, you wanna work off some of those splinters. And so, uh, you can't use it, you don't wanna hurt yourself. Um, so that one's done, and I have already gone ahead and done the second one. This is using the other materials that I had to cut down, did the same thing as I did on this, and so they're both ready to go. So let's go ahead and load it for use. So if you remember from the first video, uh, we had these different items that we were going to put inside. So um, our palette, we have our brushes. We had a container of water. That went up here, not with water in it. I'll add that later. Put that in it. Our uh, tape, do they fit? There's one. Yes, it does. And so the trays are ready. I have all the paints. This is the watercolor right here. And the other one would have the gouache. And there's more than enough room for the gouache. In fact, probably the gouache could go in here in the water. Who cares? When you're out in the field, you're just grabbing paint, putting it on your palette, and painting. It's not really... It's not a lot of organization, at least not for me. Now I'm ready to walk from my car to the, now the paint inside those trays are gonna spill out. An optional thing to use for uh, covering over the paint trays to keep the paint from falling out is paper towels. Paper towels you're going to need anyway at the uh, site for controlling the water and um, that sort of thing. So I think for me, wrapping this with a, wrapping both of them with some paper towel is actually a better use of materials than making a top because I'm gonna need the paper towels anyway. They would have had to come along anyway. Thank you. 